So then, the last car all-star race. Well, I, I've got to say this. I enjoyed it. And in particular, I enjoyed how um, it was back at North Wilkesboro. No, uh, I mean, it's a track that was last raced on before I was born. But the kind of atmosphere that you had around it and the nostalgia side of it. I feel like it gave the kind of Darlington throwback weekend a real run for its money. And I think the atmosphere of the track itself produced a lot of that. You can see some entertaining racing when they used the wet tyres. I think that's the first time they've used them in the Cup Series on an, on an oval in racing conditions uh, when it came to the heats. And yeah, it produced good racing, even if it was still largely single groove. And yeah, I think they did well to both conserve the historic legacy of North Wilkesboro, but also bring it into the modern age by seeing all of these grandstands. I mean, you get a look at the footage from iRacing, where it takes off the 1986 stuff, where which is a completely different ball game to think about 2023. A couple of things that came up of note, though. Probably the tyres um, as one of the big ones. I mean, it reminded me a bit of, not to the same extent, but the first Martinsville race we had with these Gen 7s. Um, the Martinsville night race, the Saturday night one that everybody still pans because of um, how difficult it was for people to pass, how difficult it was for people to race properly. Um, yeah, I feel like that's possibly why we didn't see as much harsh race as we did. There wasn't much in the way of cautions for these 200 laps. I think that's something that Larson said in his end of race interview. I think it's something that Bubba Wallace said as well. That they were so surprised that they didn't have another caution. Um, they were expected to have another caution to be able to, well, change the tyres again. Well, fair play to both of them, and especially to Bubba for keeping up with Larson, on the most part. When that gap got to about 3 or 4 seconds, it stayed around 3 or 4 seconds for the rest of the run. And then, yeah, if you look at the rest of the top ten, you've got Reddick, Briscoe, Elliott, Blaney, Suarez, Jones, Gibbs, and Logano. Gibbs' crew being the fastest crew on um, pit road. And that was really emotional for the 54 team to see. Um, I think, uh, haven't they been moved around a lot these past couple of seasons? So it's good to see that they're comfortable in their own spot. And... Yeah, Suarez being a pole man, that was really nice to see from NASCAR. And a bit of a who's who up and down the order. You've got the up and comers like Trackhouse. You've got Legacy Motor Club there, number 43 running in the top 10. It's really cool to see. Not only for Eric Jones, but for NASCAR fans. And to see all three manufacturers represented in the top four is also a big deal. Even then, you've got the big organisations. So you have got your um, Gibbs for Toyota, obviously, but also 2311. Um, you've got your Hendrix. You've got your track houses on the way up. But like I said, Lexi Motor Club. But you also have Penske and SHR representing Ford. It's a shame we didn't see um, like the RFK cars higher up. But yeah, it was, it was a fun watch. I wouldn't necessarily go, you know, race the season or anything like that, but it was nice to be able to see North Wilkesboro return, and it was nice to see people really enjoying it. Anyways, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.